latest new episode of the Uglies tomorrow night on ABC. Second down and four. George Kuntz out of the game. The linebacker of the Green Bay with a hamstring pull is returned as questionable as Robert Smith picks up two. So we're going to see a lot of Lamont Holland twisted linebacker tonight, 56. There is Kuntz trying to walk it off. That first down play by the Minnesota Vikings illustrated exactly what Randall Cunningham has become. A pocket passer where he's finding his second and third receivers and just dropping the ball off and taking really what's given to him. When he was younger, he'd be running all over the place. Third down and two. And that's caught by Carter. Flag is thrown. And Chris Carter, that would be, or if it holds up, his third catch of the game. And it is against the Green Bay Packers. Number 36 of the defense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. The interesting thing about that last play, you're David Palmer. You're 5'8", 173 pounds. They bring you in motion across the, the line, and you have to block number 92, Reggie White. It was, it was like a little chihuahua biting at his ankles. <laughs> but Reggie is... Uh, Watch this. <laughs> I think the Reverend showed mercy there, Boomer. <laughs> what a great job by Palmer of sticking his face in there. I want some more money if I'm Palmer if I got to do that. First down from the 48-yard line. Randall going deep again, adjusting his moss, oh. and then oh. Randy Moss squeezes his way in for the touchdown. It is unbelievable. He just throws it up, and these guys ca catch the football. I, this is like a circus out here with these guys. Randy Moss is the best young receiver that I have seen maybe ever. This guy from an impact from the moment he got here. Just look at the physical control, the concentration, and the timing when to go up and get that ball over Tyrone Williams. Boomer, uh, this is an ex nothing new, an extraordinary talent. Oh. This guy looks like Jerry Rice. Gary Anderson bangs Whoa. him through, and Moss in his career, which is a little bit more than four games old, has already scored five touchdowns. Well, let's not anoint him yet. To be no, honest. I didn't say he was Jerry Rice. <laughs> but he's something. <laughs> Oh, you get the sneaking suspicion that the season starts here, don't yeah. you, eh? This is some that, serious stuff. That was an animated Viking, by the way. I did get, I, I spotted that there. That's right, it wasn't a BG. I've got that one there, yeah. I was working the one through, but we did say, I mean, here you go, two teams, four and oh. You can't get a piece of paper between the pair of them. Oh, and, it's, but what a comeback there from, uh, well, from the Vikings. And the way they're doing it is, is amazing because it, it is Randall throwing the ball up and yeah. these guys going to get it. It's like pinball or, or like basketball, really. And, and Randy Moss does a great job here. And it's not like Tyrone Williams is a bad defensive back. And the thing to do is, is watch after the pass goes through what happens to Tyrone Williams, the defensive back who's covering him right there. But take a look at it as Moss goes up. Great timing. Moss, Williams looks a little bit too late. Moss, now look at that. He just steps over him. He gets away from Darren Sharper's tackle and steps over Williams without touching yeah. him. It was, you know, it's like, oh, excuse me, and goes in for the touchdown. It, that body control is just amazing. In these situations, is it a combination of, of a great thrower and a great catcher rather well, than one of the other? Well, the throw doesn't have to be great. Yeah. I and mean, that wasn't particularly a great throw. But Randall Cunningham knows that if the defensive back has his back to him, he can't see the ball. So he just throws. He knows he can just throw it up because his receiver will go to it. And Moss played his college ball at Marsh. So I never saw him play in college because Marshall is a small Division I school. Um, but when he got into the bowl game, he just had a tremendous bowl game. As soon as he got up against good competition, everybody realized this guy is for real. He's big. He's much bigger than Jerry Rice, but he's faster. He may not have quite, quite the quick cuts, but he's got the hands and the speed. Mm. You can see Randy Moss going right up over. You, this is a, definitely a coaching decision to say, we're going to go down the field with it, guys. If we can get them singled up one-on-one, -on -one, we can throw the ball, underthrow it, and our athletic receivers are going to go up and get it. What a terrific form of strategy by Brian Billick and Dennis Green. And Tyrone Williams has to be a little shell shot. That was pretty good coverage. This is a short kick. 
And you've got the man who ran it back the last time, Preston, who ran it back 101. And this time he is dragged down up at the 35 by Torrey and Gray. He does have him covered, but he has to find the football. And that's the key. And when you start throwing underthrown goes like this, you know, these guys have to be able to adjust. And Randy Moss and the other receivers, Jake Reed and Chris Carr, they know where the ball is. Well, on Reed's play on the other side of the field, Newsom never saw the ball. Tyrone Williams at least saw this one coming and still couldn't do anything about it. And Randy look at that start. Whoa. 192 yards already. I think that's that peak rating, too, isn't it? 20 minutes into the game. And that's... Harris. Raymond Harris. Now, with, with Randy Moss, it's the first time he's been in a game with this much exposure. He is the kid who was involved in a violent assault in high school, winds up in jail, fails a drug test. They extend jail time. Then he winds up being charged with assault against the woman who is the mother of his two children. So he comes with all of this baggage, which is the reason why a guy who had his college career goes all the way down to the 21st pick. 19 teams passed on him, including Cincinnati twice. Here's Farr, and the catch is made up at the 45-yard line by Robert Brooks, and that is a first down as he takes it into Minnesota territory. His other baggage that was somewhat lighter was that he caught 53 touchdown passes in only two years at Marshall. Right, he could have gone to Notre Dame, but they had a pass on him because of his pass. He went to Florida State and redshirted, but they let him go, and he First wound up foul. at Huntington, Rupert West Virginia at Marshall. Number 93 of the defense, 15 yards. First down. That's John Randall. The one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to aggravate Brett Favre or John Randall for that matter. But really, Brett Favre gets into gains when this starts happening to him. I mean, he's uh, been on the money so far tonight. But what? you know, Dan? They called John Randall for roughing the passer there, Boomer. That's Brett Favre, three-time MVP. Okay, so anyway, the fact <laughs> of the matter is, is you do not want to get him into the game physically like this because that's when he starts flinging the ball all over the place. And you're right, we're going to see a shootout. This is... This is unbelievable. Do all quarterbacks have glasses as rose colors oh, here? That guy, I, you know, I always was nervous playing against him. From the 34, Favre throwing into a lot of traffic. And That's picked, picked off. off. Intercepted by Orlando Thomas. And Thomas takes it all the way back to the 35. So Favre throws it into a quadrangle intended for Mark Chamura. And it's Thomas who winds up with the pick. This was just trying to hit Chamora on a seam pattern, and he actually threw it behind him, and he threw it with a lot of pressure in his face. Jerry Ball. Ouch. And Jerry, Jerry is a big ball. <laughs> and I, yeah, that seriously affected the throw, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, he he, he wanted, didn't get to step into it at all. Right, and he wants to throw it on the inside shoulder, not the outside shoulder, but... Pressure is what leads to interceptions, and that's exactly what Jerry Ball got there that time. Chief, I'm surprised they didn't call roughing the quarterback. Here is Robert Smith, who picks up eight yards. Meanwhile, Orlando Thomas is a guy who quietly, in his three-plus years in the league, now has been responsible for 24 takeaways, the most by any player since the start of the 95 season. There it is. Orlando Thomas, and they talk about the Minnesota secondary being the Achilles heel, but here they are again with yet another interception. At the 44-yard line, this is Harder, and that play slow and developing, and he just does get back to the line of scrimmage tackled by Brian Williams. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Miller Lite, an official sponsor of the NFL. And Unisys, when it comes to information, technology, and services, we eat, sleep, and drink this stuff. <laughs> kind of like we are with football, right, Al? Well, that's a low-carb diet. Yes, it is. <laughs> High protein, baby. You can eat, drink, and sleep. This, this is a good game. This is, that's the makings of a real classic. Third down and two at the 43-yard line. And Cunningham's going to keep it. Whoa, and Randall loses ball. the football. Does Holiday have that? Well, he's number 90. And he does. Bonnie Holiday. Took, Randall took quite a whack that time going up. He's a little slow getting up. Well, I wonder. I think Randall saw that there was a blitz. And I'm just wondering if he didn't decide to take this quarterback sneak on his own. Well, he's the leading rusher among quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. Some of his line 
looks like they're run blocking. The tackles look like they went into a pass set. That's why I'm wondering right. whether or not he yeah. just decided to do that on his own because he had no back in the backfield. All right, Boomer, I think you're right. That was a, They looked completely out of sync. Vaughn Booker creates the fumble. He laid the hit on. Holiday recovers. It's a wraparound draw to Travis Jervy, who takes it to the 35-yard line. It'll be second down and one with 7.07 to go and a good first half. Bikes up by a touchdown. And most quarterbacks, after they throw an interception, they kind of have that in his back of his mind. But in this case, Brett Favre doesn't really matter. Doesn't That doesn't matter to him. And he wants to come out and start making some plays. You can see right there a little nifty handoff to Travis Jervy. It was 100 miles an hour straight ahead, too. <laughs> wrap around, a wrap around draw. I like that, Al. Mm -hmm. Chicanery. Yes, sir. <laughs> Trickery and deceit. Second down and one. Back to Raymond Harris, who tries to pick up that yard and gets uh, bunched up. Very close to a first down. Randall Cunningham, if he's warming up, it's, it's conceivable that he was shaken up on that uh, fumble. He definitely got dinged. I don't ever remember seeing a quarterback get hit that hard well, on a quarterback sneak. At the very end of that play, he gets flipped over and his left shoulder really went into the ground hard. Jay Fiedler is the backup quarterback, a kid out of Dartmouth. Third down and one from the 34. And this is Henderson and he gets wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And a late flag. Among other things, we're told there's a thunderstorm nearby and is expected to pop in here in a few minutes. Wind picking up. Jerry Austin is our referee here this evening. There is no foul on the play. The formation was legal. The result of the play is fourth down. I'm not sure what will happen when this thunderstorm gets here and there's still a light rain falling, but kudos to this Lambeau Field grounds crew. They had this field covered off, and it is holding up quite well, at least to this stage of the ball game. The field is uh, is not coming up in chunks whatsoever. So it's fourth down and one, and the Packers will at least line up to go for it in the uh, 35 yard uh, line. Here we're going to play. Here we don't do this again. Either this were a 52 yard field goal. They're going to go for it, and they don't get it. Henderson. So after a nine-yard gain on first down, the Viking defense rises up. Coach Fazio <laughs> with the signal. And Tony Williams, number 94, the first guy to hit him. You got to give Williams and Jerry Ball a lot of credit in the middle like that. When they try to run the ball up the middle, your defense and tackles have to stay low. They have to be underneath the blockers, and they have to create push. And you can see Williams and Jerry Ball getting into the backfield, especially Williams. And John Randall unblocked. Well, Williams ends up two and a half yards into Green Bay's backfield, slipping to the inside of left guard Marco Rivera. That just kills the play. So it's Cun over. Cunningham, despite that takedown on that last quarterback sneak back in the game, going to the air and a little overthrown, intended for the tight end Andrew Glover. Second and ten. Cunningham taking. A shot from Vonnie Holiday, and Mike uh, Holmgren told us in preseason, he said, you know, I have to temper my enthusiasm about this guy. He's good, <laughs> and he is good. He, he had a great game last week against the Panthers, and you can see right now, they, I'm sure Fritz Schirmer said, look, we can't let Randall stand back there. we got to start hitting him, and I mean, when we hit him, we got to let him know that we're there. Second down and 10 up at the 35-yard line. Randy Moss wide to the left. Take to Smith. Going deep. Looking for Randy again. Perfect throw. Great catch. Darren Sharper with good coverage, but what can you do? I know what you can do. You can start looking for the football a little bit. This is three times now. I would imagine that the first day they get out to practice next week, they're going to be working on this play. You, you just have to turn around. and it's, it's one of the most difficult things to do for a defensive back is to run stride for stride, but you have to look for the football. Well, one thing about Sharper, he was committed to playing Randy Moss. It never even crossed his mind to look back. He never even twitched looking back. Whew. 269 yards already, 10 per whack. 
for the Vikes. Against a defense ranked number one in the league coming into the weekend. Cunningham to the end zone, and that's knocked down and nearly intercepted. And Newsom, realizing he could have had the pick, <laughs> holding his helmet. Uh, could have and, and should have. Well, you know, the thing is, I, the secondary for the Packers better, you know, they gotta they gotta pick it up a little bit. They gotta be they gotta be more urgent about what they're doing out there. And Boomer, how many better chances are they going to get than that? Yeah, I mean, you can't drop that football. I mean, these guys are talented back there, but I think they're a little shell shocked right now. Second and ten, wind picking up, starting to rain slantingly right now. T storm in the neighborhood. Ball of the 24. Green, Smith gets a block, picks up the first down, heading for the end zone, touchdown Minnesota. Jake Reed and Randall McDaniel through the key blocks on that one. This is just a magnificent performance by this Minnesota offensive machine. And you're right, the key block was by Randall McDaniel. Does his job at the line of scrimmage, gets downfield, looks back, picks off sharper. When you could throw the oh. when you throw the ball down the field as much as they have tonight, and you start throwing screens off of that, you know the defenders are going to be so far back that big plays can come from that. Andrew Glover, the tight end, looked like he had another good block downfield for Minnesota. Everybody, everybody's getting a piece of the Green Bay Packers here for the Vikings. Flag down on the conversion. And Lambeau Field is strangely silent. Well, Al, you documented well, the 25 tripping. in a row. Number 87 of the kicking team. Replay the try. To say they're not used to this is, well, obviously well, an understatement. Amazingly, the last loss here was to the St. Louis Rams on opening day in 1995. Rich Brooks was coaching the, the Rams back then. That's how long ago that was. Well, remember that the, you know, the Packers were in a hole last week. And got back into it, you know, by the by by the start of the second half. So this is uh, obviously a veteran football team. There's no panic. I think they're a little, sh you know, sh starstruck if, right. you, if you ask me. Right. Robert Smith, by the way, saying hi, mom, pointing to his teeth because he had to have some work done on it. He scored last week on a screen against Chicago, and David Dixon, the guard, came down and when he hugged him, he knocked his helmet into his teeth. Chipped two teeth, lost one, but the bridge work looks pretty good right now, and so do his hands. Well, David Dixon weighs 352 pounds. <laughs> That's where a hug can be a life-threatening experience. Yes. All right, coming up next week is Sunday Night Football on ESPN, and that's the matchup. Atlanta 3-1 and one under Dan Reeves against the New York Giants. And Monday night, a beauty for us, Dan Marino and the Dolphins with a mark of 3-1 and one against the undefeated Jacksonville Jaguars from Jacksonville next Monday night. We're going to let Danny throw it next week a little bit? What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think he might. All right. I think he might. By the way, was I hallucinating yesterday? Did I see the Falcons score 50-some points? Oh, hey, Dan Reeves has got them going on down there, I'll tell you. Chris That's, Chandler's playing well, wow. playing good defense. Dom Capers must have felt like he was hallucinating. Yes. Green Bay's defense. Now, th look at this. Coming into the game, in those five categories, key, key categories, number one in the league, and right now in a game that's 25 minutes and 17 seconds old, they have been shredded for 24 points and 294 yards. I, I think it's safe to say they're no longer number one in any of those categories. Ooh. I'll tell you, playing, playing the Minnesota Vikings is a track meet. Guys are running all over the place. They have speed at all the at the key positions. They have a quarterback who can throw the football. Let me ask you again, Dan. Brad Johnson comes back and he's healthy. And Randall Cunningham's throwing the ball all over the place like this. What do you do? I think I think Brad Johnson, when he comes back, is going to be the starting quarterback. I don't know. That's what Dennis Green said. Brad Johnson is their franchise quarterback. Randall Cunningham is their backup quarterback, and that is what he will return to when Brad Johnson comes back. I understand your point. I don't know how you take out a guy that's that hot either. Here's Preston from the three-yard line. A flag is thrown, and he brings it back to the 18. That last Viking touchdown, remember, came after they had stopped Green Bay on second and one, third and one, 
and fourth and one. With a score 17 to 10 and then down the field they went 65 yards to make it 24 to 10. I think it's safe to say though guys. After we listen to old Jerry. We have a personal foul. We have a low block. 31 of the kicking team. 15 yards. First down. There's a lot of quarterbacks in this league right now that would like to be where Randall Cunningham oh, is. Without question. Running right? this show. Huh. And to think two years ago, Randall had no contract offers, went to work for TNT, was part of their pregame and halftime shows, and got into the, the granite business. He was actually, he was building kitchen countertops. In Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. When, yep. you, when you look at their offensive team, you see the veterans on the offensive line, a nice size tight end, all the wide receivers, the running back, they have every piece that you would want as a quarterback. From the 32. Barb throws, that's caught by the tight end, Mark Chamura. A flag is thrown after Mark picks up a momentary first down. Kaylee Wong made the tackle. Against the Vikings. So it's a first down. Illegal contact. Cut. Number 37 of the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Dan, you know a lot about construction. You you can you can make a pretty good living though with granite kitchen countertops. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh yeah. yeah. Throwing a little fine Italian marble in there, and you can yes, pretty good markup in that business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Problem is you cut one of those babies wrong. You know you got to haul it away and start over. Yes, you do. From the 44. Far throws and nobody home, and Brett goes down. Mr. Randall helps him back up. One of the great characters in the National Football League is John Randall. His mo well, he doesn't have a motor. This guy's got a series of motors. He's got leg motors, arm motors. Good shot there by Stalin Colony. But it was uh, John Randall who was nice enough to Give Brett a hand up, and I'm sure he had something to say in the process. Oh, absolutely. Four wideouts here, second and ten. A win with whipping, raining harder. Travis Derby on a draw. Escapes what would have been a McDaniel tackle. Picks up a couple. Let's go to Leslie Visser. Leslie. Al, I, follow, I found a Hall of Famer, Bart Starr, of course, the legend who corresponds with Brett with Farb every year. And what do you have advice for him right now, Bert? Well, I don't need to give this guy advice. He is absolutely sensational, and I think they'll get this turned around. Vikings are playing very, very well. Well, there you have it, Al, the star report. Yes. <laughs> oh. Very good, Les. I think you could go to every bratwurst stand in this stadium and bump into a Hall of Famer. They are plentiful. Third down and seven from the 47-yard line. Favre escapes. Oh. But not a second time, and this time he is wrapped up by Derek Alexander. And he got away from John Randall. Oh, oh baby. John can't believe that. Looks like John Randall ran right around Ross Verba. I, it, you know, maybe, maybe we're wrong, Dan. Maybe, maybe that's the spot where he should be. There he is at the bottom of your screen. Gets into Verba. And Actually, just, it's Matt Willig Yes, in it's there. Matt Willig. Verba's out of the game. 76, Matt Willig. And now Landetta to kick. They have Palmer back, but they've got Moss back as the short man. So it behooves Landetta to really bang one, and he does. And Palmer fair catches it at the 11-yard nice, line. Nice punt there. So Randall and the defense rest. Ball up at the 11-yard line, 256. A reminder, tomorrow, another episode of a Sports Night. One of the big new shows of the fall tomorrow night right here on ABC. I'll tell you, if Matt Willig's going to be the left tackle against John Randall, they're going to have to get him some help because that's going to be a long evening trying to block John Randall. Well, we're checking with the Packers right now to find out if something's wrong with Ross Verba. First and 10, Minnesota at the 11-yard line. Robert Smith off the left side, gain of about three. Kenny Wolf, our producer, passes along the information that Ross Verbo was on the sidelines having some equipment fixed. <laughs> Putting, having That's, blinkers put on. Oh, yeah, Bad yeah, timing. Yeah. There's the very fine left tackle. 
of the Green Bay Packers, Ross Verbin. He looks ready to go. Unfortunately, he wasn't in there when they needed him most. Second and seven up at the 14-yard line. Vikings up by two touchdowns as we approach the two-minute warning. And Cunningham throws, and that's caught by Carter. And Chris makes his fourth catch of the night. Chris Carter, remember, started his career with Randall at Philadelphia, and then he was let go by Buddy Ryan, and all he has done in a career that will wind up on the steps at Canton, Ohio someday, is catch 760 passes. If you're a DB for the Green Bay Packers now, I mean, you're, you're shell-shocked, you're playing off. That time, Tyrone Williams is playing off Chris Carter. One minute, they're playing on him, and now they're off of him. So, and, and Randall did a good job of throwing the ball underneath. Two-minute warning. Vikings with all three timeouts and a 14-point cushion. great result. Holmes Place. For a trial month membership at only £69, call 0800 444 844 or visit your nearest Holmes Place club. Chat and date tonight. Call the Singles Network on 0891 05 05 05. Some of the best Nintendo 64 games at 39.99. Help may be needed to prevent you buying too many. New Seven Seas Extra High Strength Cod Liver Oil helps keep joints supple and flexible. It's the best ever cod liver oil from Seven Seas. Half the price, twice the fun, 50% cheaper than 0891. Gay Cruise, 0894, 87, 87, 87. So welcome back, and that home, the home team struggling, Mike. Yeah, and you saw in that last play, they tried to rush seven or eight men. That means man-to-man -man coverage on the receivers, which makes it tough. What a quarter it's been, especially for Minnesota. This is the first NFL game in eight years with three touchdowns of 50 or more yards, two by the Vikes, the other Preston's pick return. And at the two-minute warning, Minnesota, a first down as Robert Smith gets stopped at about the line of scrimmage. Half winding down. What about halftime? Let's check in with Chris Berman. Being top ten plays of the week, including the speedy scoring spree by those scary Falcons. Also, the college play of the year and a review of the first half. Now, back to Lambo and Al Michaels. And what a first half it has been here is John Randall and the Viking defense looks on their offense right now. Second down and nine, up at the 22-yard line. Whistle blowing. Minnesota approaching 300 yards in total offense tonight. You know what I thought was interesting, Al? Was Prior the to the snap, ball start. Number 82 of the offense, five yards. It's still second down. That after Green Bay held Minnesota on that first down play, that they didn't call timeout. Against any other team, they're probably calling time out there to get the ball back before the end of the half. Yeah, but the way Minnesota's going, yeah, that's the, the, you know. <laughs> what does that tell you? I was yeah. saying, what does that tell us? Get exactly. off the field, let's regroup, yep. and let's see if we can get this half over with. Well, it tells you that a team has 241 yards in a quarter, so what, what's that figure out that, that comes out to 964 <laughs> yards for the game? I would think, however, if they hold them here, they'll probably call time out if the clock is still running. Starting to pour, second down and 14, and the wind is really picking up now. And Cunningham swings it, and that's caught by Reed, who breaks the tackle, and Jake gets a first down. He's up to the 36-yard line, tackled by Butler. Obviously, if there is severe weather moving into the Green Bay area, he who has the lead certainly has the advantage. And right now, the Vikings up by two touchdowns. Why aren't the Vikings calling timeout right now? What are they thinking about? They have all three at their disposal. I, I don't know why they didn't use one well, right there. Maybe because of the weather. I'm, I'm just guessing. Oh, but the way know. they're going, well, I mean, they're, they're lined up as if to run the clock out. 
No, no, oh, this is a fake play here. He's going to snap it to the guy behind him. Yep. Randall's walking off, and they're going to snap it to the guy yeah, behind him. From the 35-yard line. <laughs> what? what? What oh, yeah. a little, little chicanery going on there, Dan. But what? But what a waste of time. It was. Well, they're trying to run a, oh. uh, you know, a, a, uh, a fool you play there, but I, I don't get it. I mean, they lost, what, about 35 seconds at least. I guess the only thing they can figure is that they, they're up by two touchdowns. They've had a marvelous half. It's pouring like crazy right now. Oh. And why, you know, throw it up and, and risk an interception, I guess. Well, oh. they, why, why not? They've been throwing it up all night. But, you know, that play right there obviously was... You know, they were trying to run a you know a trick play there, and it didn't work. Have you ever heard of something called killer instinct? Yeah. You know, really. Oh, I can't take issue with the way. The only thing I can take issue with them now is is the fact that they wasted the time right here. Other than that, I mean, oh man. I guess they figured they could just throw it up and score in 10 seconds. I don't know. I, I guess they thought that if maybe Jeff Christie, the center, was under instructions, that if the Packer defense started walking towards their sideline to go ahead and snap the ball. Take a look at the the quarterback comparison with Cunningham having an unbelievable half. And trying to tack on more yardage than he can as that goes through the hands of Chris Carter and incomplete. <laughs> well, let's face it. Brett Favre has had some big nights on Monday Night Football but not by himself. Randall Cunningham is no stranger to getting it done under these bright lights before. Randall Cunningham has, has turned it up when he's had to. Now what do they do now? 21 seconds? Second and 10. <laughs> well, it's a spread formation. So maybe give it one shot to, to get into field goal range. Instead, they keep it on the ground. They give it to Smith. He takes it up to the 42-yard line. Smith, ball for you. They're just going to let the clock run. They must be sad. I, I, yeah. I don't get it, but very strange. Playing at Lambeau Field, two touchdowns ahead of the Packers, that's not enough for me. Well, I've got to think, if you ask them about it after the game, it's dictated by the weather conditions. They're happy to go in up by two touchdowns, 24-10. A brilliant first half of the Minnesota Vikings. It's pouring in Green Bay. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Show, ESPN's Top 10 Plays of the Week. And we will be back after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC stations. Well, they might not have been pretty, but they got there to 24-10 <laughs> into the half in the lead. And very strange, because you couldn't agree with the more. I mean, when you have a minute and 40 seconds to go and your offense is clicking the way it is, why don't you try to get downfield? I mean, even if you throw in it's intercepted down there, it's as good as a punt. So what do you, what do you have to lose, basically? Nevertheless, you've got the Vikings on, on, on a field where hard, no one's run for 25 games apart from the Packers. Uh, doing exceptionally well, and uh, and it was after a field goal that they were the first ones on the ball with a touchdown. Yeah, 3-3, three, three, and uh, the first of three big touchdowns from Randall Cunningham to his wide receivers, and they all, they're all, they all uh, two of the three, sorry, one was a screen pass, but these two, remarkably the same, because both times you've got a defensive back who's running and not looking back, and Randall just throws the ball up and lets the receiver go to the ball, and it goes in for the touchdown. It was as simple as that for them, wasn't it, of course? And, you know, nowadays, so many so many defensive backs don't look back at the ball. Yeah. They play the receiver's eyes in his hands, and when the receiver goes for it, then they come in, and they try to knock the ball away. Well, when the receiver's six foot four and you're five foot ten or five foot eleven, and he goes up, it makes it hard for you to get up there and knock that ball away. Now, of course, the Packers then when did what they've been doing all season long, which is basically kind of saving themselves, and, uh, and they did it immediately. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great way to come back. Uh, the bad thing is that it's not your offense that comes back and takes it, but your special teams. But any anytime you get a special teams touchdown, then you're, then you're doing well. And Roel Preston, obviously a weapon to be counted in his rookie season. And he gets the block that we pointed out from Joe Andrusi, and he gets one from uh, Bill Schrader, both NFL Europe products. And Schrader stops to celebrate, then comes back and throws <laughs> another block, which, I mean, guys got to learn that you, you can't be celebrate. You know, you, you can't celebrate until after the play's over. You celebrate on your own time, not on the team's time. 
which he then went and completed yeah. nicely by leaping into the crowd, of course, yeah. which is exactly what... Uh, now, that's celebrating. That's the way you go about your <laughs> celebrating right. business, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Now, you might have thought that particular stage there that the Packers, um, getting, the, getting their noses back into it, might have gone on there from there. We, we really did. I mean, I, th I thought momentum was going to shift, but right, right away, Minnesota comes back, and it's the same thing. When you've got that deep threat, when you know that you have a quarterback who can throw deep and receivers who can catch deep, then the other team's always got to be in fear of that. And this is the beauty of it, because Randall Cunningham once again. Yeah, and he goes deep um, this time to Randy Moss, the rookie, a great bit of timing. And then he beats Darren Sharper, who's the safe, safety who's come over, and st steps over Tyrone Williams and goes in. And basically, Sharper's in there because he can basically cover as well as a corner, but they're having all kinds of problems in man-on-man. -man and as there. you say, that we, we saw exactly the same problem again, is, is, is you know, that they're not looking at the pass, they're just looking to hope to see the ball come over their shoulder, and then get some get some hand on it. Yeah, and which works a lot of times, but it but it also when you're dealing with receivers who are bigger than you are and jump higher, it's a tough thing to do. And and no one seems to have the body control that that Randy Moss has. It's true. Now in theory, if the script was going right, we'd have had the Packers coming back again. Didn't quite happen. And, and, well, they and and they should have because Favre came down and then he threw an interception when he when he got hurt. But then Minnesota fumbled the ball back to them. But then Minnesota held on really what is almost the key play of the half. They yeah. held on that uh, fourth and short. Uh, did a tremendous job in the defensive line, and that gave Minnesota another shot, you know, at scoring, and they did. That's right. Not not in the way that which it happened before, but this will do. And what what happens is when when you know that the receivers are doing so well downfield, you know that what the Packers are going to do is to try to come with some pressure. And now all you get is a four-man rush, but it's a really well-executed screen. You see how Robert Smith slides out there, and the linebacker gets knocked away. That's the key to it, right there. Is Koontz getting pushed out of the way? And that leaves no, no one else except the defensive backs to come over because they're in a prevent defense with five defensive backs and only two linebackers. And when you do that, that's, that's a good time to take advantage of the screen because with two linebackers in, in front of that umbrella of defensive backs, there's lots of room on the outside of the line. And we all know Favre's the, you know, the golden boy, but Cunningham, the veteran, has shown him a few tricks out there. Well, you know, and it's an interesting thing because so many veteran quarterbacks are doing well this season, you know, coming in either as unusual starters or as replacements. And there's no... Exp there's no um, there's Substitute no what? for that experience, Thank you. mate. Thank you. No I think you'll find that was the end of the sentence. <laughs> 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 okay, Mike from Mike later on. He's going to uh, start some sentences. I'll finish them off for him. Uh, but of course, we've got the second half when we come back in just a few minutes' time. Plus, also the man that we mentioned there, Brett Favre. We know what he can do on the field. Let's see how he behaves off the field. More of that in a couple of minutes' time. Get the edge with the Body Tech Enhancer. Bodytech uses EMS, electronic muscle stimulation, developed by physiotherapists in the 70s to help injured athletes recuperate muscles. EMS is now being used by professional athletes as part of their regular training routines. Bodytech can help you enhance your body by toning individual muscle groups. Just strap the specially designed pads to the muscles you want to tone. I use Bodytech for enhanced muscle definition. Bodytech is safe and simple and can even be used while relaxing in the home or office. Bodytech Enhancer is guaranteed for one year and comes with a 14-day money-back trial. Bodytech has given me the added edge. Bodytech is available from selected retail stores. For information or to order, simply call 08000 35 0000. Get the edge with Bodytech Enhancer. Call 08000 35 0000 now. Chat and date. Call friends and swap telephone numbers 0891 17 17 17.